Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have a Japanese haul video for you guys. Okay, so I tried to film this before the sun went down, but it just never works for me. So the sun has gone down. I just filmed a glimpse of the sunset so that you guys can at least enjoy the beauty of it because it was really, really pretty today. But apologize if the lighting changes throughout this video. Please just give a bit of leeway for that. Yeah, I've been meaning to do this Japanese haul video for a really, really long time. Um, and I just had to do some other stuff and I've been really busy with some shoots and other filming things that are currently being edited right now. So thank you for being patient, guys. So as you guys probably know, I recently went to Japan with William and it was our first trip there. So it was really exciting. Um, William had always thought of Japan as his dreamland. We're not otakus about manga or anything, but we did watch Naruto before, quite hooked on that for a while. But other than that, I haven't really been into like Japanese manga or anime too much. Uh, I really wanted to say how much I love Japan and I have fallen in love with their cosmetics. So I have really tried really hard to not touch them, but some of them I could not resist and I've already opened it, which might be good for you guys so that I can give you a little bit of a review. So yeah, I have a huge box here. But rest assured, not the whole thing is full. It's just where I'm storing storing it. Yeah, it's not full completely. Most of the shopping I did was done in Tokyo. This is a weird place to start. We went to um, Akihabara, which is the, I guess, the center of all manga, anime, otaku land. And they have all these like old games as well. It was really fun. We went into this place that had like old Famicons, like the really, really old Nintendo games that you like slot into a little thing. And Oppa picked up a couple of games there, but I picked up this wig because I thought that I might be able to use it in a tutorial for like some kind of cosplay tutorials. This is the kind of color that I actually want to do my hair one day. I had to go to Kashuen while I was in Japan. If you don't know what Kashuen is, it's a really, really, really old brush company that has been around since 1883. They started from um, paint brushes and then they moved on to makeup brushes and now they're doing like technology art brushes like for phone and iPad and whatever. It was super cool to go to, very, very expensive, but look how meticulously they tied up my brush, it just says Kumano Japan on it and it's a foundation brush. I got the one with the pink ferrule and the black handle. It was really just worth the visit. This was really awesome because um, my sister is also a graphic artist, I guess. Like she designs logos and patterns and she loves to paint. So I was able to grab her a couple of painting brushes from there as well. I also got uh, another tiny, tiny brush that's all the way <laughs> over there in my room, so I will show you guys that in another time. I'm sorry, I have so many to get through anyway. What I've been itching to open, but I still have not opened just for you guys. It is the La Dure Face Color Rose La Dure Pot and the Face Color Rose La Dure. I always have this thing of reading out the whole names. Did you guys know that La Dure makes makeup? To start with, like the bag itself is so pretty as well. So if they ask you if you would like a bag, I advise you to say yes, just because the bag is so pretty. It's like a real life French romantic, princessy Disney-like. And then here is the refill that goes inside it. Look how pretty it is. They are rose petals. So it looks like some kind of like house decor or something. I don't know the exact process that it's gone through, but it's basically a blush. So you pour this into here and then you put your blush brush in and rub it through and the powder just sort of like goes on. When I first saw this, I thought that it was just a decoration, but the lady was like, yeah, it's a blush. Like go try it. The colors were so nice. It was so expensive though. Um, I wanted everything at La Durée, but Oppa was there. So end of story. <laughs> Anyways, so I did pick up these two and I'm so happy with this purchase. It's just gonna sit there even if I don't use it for the rest of my life. I'm just gonna use it like rarely and keep it sitting there and just look so pretty on my little makeup table. So I was able to pick this up so I was very happy. Um, the color that I got was in number one and this is like a just a pink. It's a rose pink color. There was also like a really pretty like orange coral, etc. I can already see the sun is going down and it's so dark. In my previous Lancome makeup tutorial for the pastel eyes and lips, I quickly showed these guys and I actually used these in the tutorial and I've got it on my eyes today as well. I had to pick up some lashes because these just looked so natural 
it looked like basically Korean lashes but in much nicer packaging <laughs> and of course much more expensive. Japanese packaging is, I guess, they make it so that girls really want it because they put so much detail into it. So first of all, I guess there's this kind of like customer satisfaction that you're buying something that has been really well thought out and really well designed and packaged, which, you know, all of us girls really care about. Packaging is really important. I think each one was about $10 each and they came with two pairs each. I've already used one of these two and these Bridget Romantic, Bridget Romantic eyelashes look so nice. I have been waiting until I film this video so that I can finally use this because I just thought it would be weird if I show you guys empty cases. So yep, yeah, got these lashes. In Tokyo, there was like a main street and then they had this, I forgot what it was called, but it was like a huge drugstore basically. And they had all of the Japanese makeup brands in it. So I kind of went crazy there. <laughs> And I had to buy like just this and that. So here I'm gonna go and, oh, I forgot to show you guys the brush for La Durée. Here's the brush. It's so pretty. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. It just looks like, you know, those like Barbie toys that you play with as a kid, but the real thing, but for adults. And I'm gonna open it and show you guys. So this is the cheek brush. And it comes in this like just little plastic sleeve. It's just got this very like Disney-esque kind of feel to it. And it's a really perfect like shape to dig into the petals without ruining them and pick up the right color. So yes, that is the brush. I'm so happy with this brush, it's so pretty. I always thought, oh, one more thing that I got from La Durée. Completely forgot that I got this. Oppa is the one that actually said that I should get it because I was just like kind of staring at it. He was like, just get it. William is really well trained now, he knows what is kind of worth collecting as a makeup collector and what is not worth collecting. <laughs> so yeah, I got this little hand mirror. It comes in this little pouch. I'm not sure if you can catch that, but it's like white with gold and it's got a very like Victorian feel to it, which I just love. That's the kind of feel that I've been going for when I've been doing interior design for my house. So I really like it and I just wanted to have this in my collection. So I had to pick up some sponges. These are Shiseido's sponges. This is Shiseido Macrolage, the sponge puff for liquid foundation. And <laughs> my birdies are so noisy today. Um, I was really surprised that Shiseido is so common there. All of the hotels there had Shiseido shampoo, conditioner, soap. Everything was Shiseido and it was just very high quality but common. So I loved it so much. I love Shiseido. I've always loved Macrolage. And I think Shiseido Macrolage was actually my very first makeup palette in my life. And I actually started getting into makeup because of Shiseido, to be honest. And I'll tell you guys that story another time. Anyway, so I picked up a sponge cleanse, cleaner from Shiseido because I thought this would be worth trying out. Ooh, I also picked up the Shiseido Lash Adhesive. I just thought it would be good to pick it up because it's quite cheap. It dries really quick and if you just miss that little time period in which it's still tacky enough to put the glues on, it just doesn't stick on at all. And even if you do apply it during the time when it's still tacky, the hold is not really strong enough. It's almost like you can just tug the lashes off really easily. So it's not waterproof in any way. So it's not something that I would buy again or recommend. Quickly, I also bought these contact lenses from the cosplay store that had the wigs. They're not really circle lenses, they're more just like anime circle lenses, just in case I do a tutorial. And I actually have not really used pink circle lenses before, if you guys have not realized. So I'm quite excited to see how this looks on me. I also picked up these two eyelash curlers from Shiseido. One is the Macrolage in the black, and I wanted a silver one as well. And my eyes are really, really flat. They're not bulged out in any way, so that's probably why these fit me so well. So yeah, I had to pick up two of these. Another brand that I have really fallen in love with is this brand called Visse. Visse. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but I got the eyebrow and nose powder because as you guys know, I'm pretty obsessed with eyebrow powders and finding you know light enough ones that are super soft and blendable. I always change my hair color, so I have a lot of brow powders. So this product I could not resist and I had to open it up and I've been using it every single day. These colors are actually really great for Japanese style contouring because I realized that Japanese style makeup has a specific sort of shade undertone to all the colors. Mattish, soft, um, kind of 
ashy and grayish. Not in a really bland way, but in a very like Japanese-esque kind of way. You know, even the purple and lilacs have a sort of grayish tone to it. And it's, I think it's really pretty and very feminine. The colors are actually really different from the colors that you might find in Korean makeup. So I was really intrigued by that, also for the blushes too. And I did pick up a lot of blushes as well. Um, I went to these drugs, I think it was like a pharmacy. Was it a Watson's? It might have been like a Watson's. Got this from Infinity. This is just a case and I got two blushes. Um, one is this color, which is the perfect kind of color for my face. My favorite type of color anyway. And I also got, oh, and I also got this color here which is a kind of dusty, peachy orange. Anyway, so I love Japanese blush colors as you guys probably know from my previous videos. So yeah, I had to pick up these two and the case here, I only got one. I keep my blushes like in my drawer anyway and I thought it would take up space. So that is a palette here. It's just a pure, simple and classy case. And you slip the blush inside and it comes with a very, very decent brush. For me, this Infinity line reminds me a lot of Estee Lauder, the color choices and just something about the image about the brand. Anyway, so that's what I got there. So PK800, which I have been using a lot as well. And this one is in OR200. Um, I apologize if this video is a little bit all over the place. I can't organize myself when I'm doing this kind of massive haul. So I love Paul and Joe as well. I love Jill Stewart and I love Paul and Joe, but I had to limit my spending. So I just picked up this one blush from Paul and Joe, which also came separately with the case and the blush. This is the blush color that I got. It's got two different layers. This side is a pastel pink and this side is a bright pink that looks really pretty on the cheeks once it's on. It looks a little bit much in the pan, but trust me, it's so pretty. This is from Heroin Make. I read it in the Japanese and it says Heroin Make. I had no idea it was Heroin Make because it doesn't say it. It does say it. Am I dumb or am I dumb? Okay, so I got this eyelash fixer, which I haven't opened yet. And also this one appealed to me because it says strong one. I also picked up this Versay Lip Volume Essence, which is a um, transparent gloss. Suddenly so quiet because I'm applying my lip gloss and I'm not talking. So my birds are not talking either. So it's a lip volume essence and it plumps the lip and it smells a little bit pepperminty. I'm not sure, how does it look right now? I love it because it goes on really smoothly and it's not sticky. It's not like really thick and gloopy. It just kind of slides on like melted Vaseline, but a little bit thicker than melted Vaseline. Whoa, it's so shiny. Okay, but as you guys know, I need a lot of help with my lip volume. I also picked up this steam cream. They were selling these on the streets and they were seriously so pretty. So it's basically like one hand cream that has the same formula in it, but it comes with different packaging designs. Very feminine floral ones. They were cute, like quirky character ones. And I got this one that has like little cute necklaces on them. So yeah, I've been using this every single day. This is called Birthday Neko by Saya Suzuki and it's handmade in Japan for face, body and hands. First time I'm finding out that I can actually use it for my face and body too. It smells very like um, floral, florally. What is this smell? What does this smell? Got some on my notes. I don't know how to explain the smell. I think it's just floral, but yeah, it's um, a really nice consistency. So I recommend if you guys go to Japan and see these on the streets, the steam creams, definitely pick up at least one for either yourself or you can definitely find like a pattern that suits somebody if you're looking to buy a present for someone. They package it really nicely for you as well. So that comes all done for you. Ooh, the ball on the Hello. Why are you barking at nothing? Really? Doo -doo -doo. You know the weirdest thing is when I'm home alone and there's nothing but Ellie just starts barking at nothing and Ellie is not the type of dog to bark at anything really. She's not a very vocal dog. So it's very strange when she suddenly just barks at nothing. Anyway, so um, I also picked up these two from the brand called Excel. The colors were just really nice and very different from a lot of the neutral brown <clears throat> excuse me, palettes that I have and it's almost like a matte, matte metallic texture. So I was really intrigued by it. So it comes with these four different colors and there's a highlight color. It's just the classic type of brown palette that I absolutely love. I also got this little thing, Skin Care Suru Eyeshadow. So this is like base makeup type eyeshadow 
primer type of product and it evens out the skin tone and I suspect that it's kind of hydrating. The great thing about Japanese products is that it never over promotes what it does. I've never come across any Japanese product that ever like lies or exaggerates about the product's functions and so because I believe what it says I picked it up because I thought that it would definitely be able to be used as a base or as um, like an eyeshadow primer. I think it was like one of the last days in Tokyo. William really wanted to take me to Ginza because apparently it's one of the oldest historical and monumental areas that used to be like the capital area. Trades and merchants were there and some are like the oldest shops in history of the kind, etc. Of course, Kashuen was there. We also were able to eat like the most classic, most Japanese type of udon ever that I've ever eaten. It was really plain, more plain than what they usually give us in Korea or in Australia because they obviously have to match it to like the fusion taste that we have, taste buds that we have. You know that feeling of this is the original? So that was really worth it. So highly recommend you guys to check out Ginza if you're into shopping and want to see those kind of things. They had this Shiseido store which has all of Shiseido's brands in it which includes like Cletopo, Maquillage. What else is under Shiseido? I forgot what other brands are under Shiseido, but once I'm there, I'm like, oh yes, this is Shiseido as well. I've completely forgotten now, but I did go and pick up one product from there. It's from Cletopo. It's a liner cream, and this is in number 101. The reason I picked this up is because I've run out of my Bobbi Brown gel liner, and I've just about gotten a little bit sick of it because it honestly just dries out too quick, but it can get really stiff and flaky although it is absolutely amazing for waterproofness. So I picked up this one here, which I also used in my last tutorial, I think. Um, once you put the lid into the end, the brush pops out and it's one of those brushes that you apply from the vertical motion. I have used this already, so just as a brief review, the packaging itself is just so nice. It really reminds me of Shiseido's a long time ago cream liners, which I used to love a lot. Um, it's very, very creamy and it can be opaque. It can be not too opaque and very naturally applied, but it's not waterproof, but it does glide on very smoothly. And if you want something that's not waterproof, I guess it's a really good option. So I'm liking this, but I think I will just have to go back to Bobbi Brown because nothing can beat how long lasting it is. Anyway, so I got one of those and that's my first Cletopo product. Oh, I also got something else from La Durée. I didn't even know because it was sitting right at the bottom of the box. This is the Glossy Rouge in number two. Look at the packaging product here. It reminds me of Etude House, but a much, much more well executed Etude House. Not to say anything about Etude House, I love Etude House too. I also went to Sukyu, which is very famous for their brushes. And I wanted to get some like kind of foundation or base product. So I picked up these face designing concealers, which come separately again in the separate packs and a separate kit. I got this highlight color here and a range of different concealer slash under eye slash um, pigmentation spotting type of tailored concealers. I always do those really long phrases. These are great but they're not very very pigmented and they are the type that kind of slide around a little bit and sort of disappear. Plus the colors themselves, no matter how close I thought they were to my Bobbi Brown sand, they just don't do that well with covering my dark circles. So I will still use this here and there for like little spotting and stuff. Can you guys see it there? Um, let me just show you how naturally this covers. The only thing about this is, the reason why I was saying it's kind of a write-off though is because if you put it under foundation and you apply foundation over it, it just disappears because it just is a little bit sheer. But as you guys can see, it's already kind of concealed it. Oh, another product that I got from this day is this really gorgeous blush. Almost reminds me a little bit of um, Yenne, Olden Clear Professional, which is a Korean brand. And this also comes with a little flip thing with the brush. And the brush is really soft. It's rounded and it's really good quality. It's got like an orange layer, it's got a pink layer, fluoro pink layer. Then it's got these like neutral kind of subtle layers that help to neutralize the color if you want to make it less crazy. But yeah, I really like this blush and I wish that I got more, but William was there. 
When William comes, he's gonna get like the shock of his life with this mess. One product that is not a Japanese product, but I got from the Japanese Duty Free is the Guerlain Gold Radiance Foundation Haruo Gold. Honestly, I've really loved Guerlain Foundations ever since I found out about it from my mother-in-law about six years ago, but I don't know why, but I just never ended up buying it. Maybe I just always got distracted by other foundations, but I'm so glad that I was like, I want to get this because as you guys know, I've been in love with Guerlain's Meteorites as well. So I wanted to use the foundation together with the powder. And I've been really loving this. I highly recommend for anyone who's got very neutral skin, not too much oiliness, not too much dryness, but even if you've got dryness, this never patches up into your lines. Anyway, I really like it. I think the smell and everything about this product is just awesome. So without blobbing too much, <laughs> my new favorite current foundation. So yeah, that is all that I got from Japan um, in terms of makeup. I am actually headed to Bali, Indonesia, Indonesia, Bali, Indonesia, Bali because I've been invited by SK2 and I actually have never been to Bali as well and I know that it's an amazing honeymoon destination and it's so pretty. I wish I could go there with William but I'm gonna go and I'm so excited to meet some other beauty vloggers from around the world. A couple of other girls from Korea are also going and just to update you guys, I have recently really really been in love with sk2 products again if you've been following me on instagram i showed you guys a post of my sk2 products and how i'm giving it a go again and my skin has been amazing guys i have only had like one or two breakouts ever since i started using sk2 again which actually i've been using since last year but i didn't want to talk about it before I was completely certain about it being awesome for my skin. So actually I started using SK2 again for my skincare routine a couple of weeks before I filmed my Holy Grail products for 2015. You guys probably know, but I've always had a breakout, at least one going on on my face. Since I got off the pill a couple of years ago, you guys know that story, right? It's a really old video and I'm sitting on my bed and I'm holding like my doll. So it's not something I'm proud of and I wanna show everyone again, but if it's gonna be helpful for you guys, I'll leave it down in the comments below. Um, I do go into some embarrassing details about what the pill did for me and my body. And since then I always got breakouts, even though I never had acne my whole life. And Ever since I used SK2 again, faithfully since December last year, um, I had one like bout of breakouts, which you get for when you start using the Patera. But once I churned through that, like a week afterwards, my skin went completely clear and my skin has been amazing. It's really smooth. The pores have gone smaller. I'm not sure if you can see it, but yeah, my skin has gone really good. And I feel like it's my like security. <laughs> to take my SK2 with me wherever I go and use it. So yeah, anyway, I'm not gonna talk too much about that, but just wanted to update you guys on what I've been loving for my skin. Yeah, I'll make sure that I keep you guys posted about all of those things. Um, I'm just wanting to update you guys before I head over because I know that this video will go a couple of days from now and then it might be too late. There's so much to talk about, guys. I feel like this has been a really long video. Um, I hope you guys don't mind. This is a kind of longish kind of catch up with you guys that's a bit more heart to heartish but yeah if you guys do want to keep up with me i will definitely like post up photos throughout my time in bali on instagram do snapchat and stuff when i have wi-fi and if i can i'll vlog my experience there and i will share it with you guys on this channel once i'm back as well let me know if you would like me to do that because as you guys know i'm not too good with faithful vlogging just never turns out the way that I want to. But if enough of you guys really, really want it, I will burden myself to vlog it properly and share it with you guys because I'm pretty sure it will be a really awesome experience and I'm so looking forward to going to a summer, springish summer kind of country. So anyways, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Guys, it's a proper update since the beginning of this year because I didn't get to do it face to face to you guys in my tutorial. If you guys would like to see my last tutorial that I did in conjunction with the Korean Seshi magazine and with Lancome's new really pretty spring collection, which you guys have to check out, I'll make sure to link it over here or down in the description box below. And I really hope you guys have a great rest of the week Week, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye! Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. It's free and I do my best to share my life and my honest thoughts with you guys. And also I've got some other awesome videos, awesome in my opinion, <laughs> up there and down there. Also, New Streets of Soul episode is coming soon. So please stay posted for that. I'm sure you guys will be really, 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 really excited about this topic. Stay tuned.
다음에 또 봐요. 아, 피트, 피트, 피트. Oh my gosh. How do I show all this to you guys? Okay, how was this? <coughs> Leather pole. And did I get the brush for it? I don't think I got the brush for it. Leather pole.